Yeah, hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial for marmoworld.com. And in this NAP special, I want to show you some of the brand new features of the next version of After Effects that comes after CS6 and that are currently presented at the NAP show by Adobe. So the version that I have running here is not CS6, it's the preview of the next version that is running uh, at on the nap and I have it here on my machine and I'm going to look now at one of the new features and this is the new warp stabilizer VFX. I have prepared here some clip for this so I just take the clip and drag it into a new composition and you can see that this is some clip that I recorded for an earlier tutorial of mine where I used Mocha import to create a stabilized precomp and now with the new version of the warp stabilizer which is an extension of the previous one that you have in CS6 you can do something similar here so what we want to do is we do not want to stabilize this clip here what what you probably did with warp stabilizer before but we want to insert something here in the background and it should move according to the background such that it looks as if it is part of this wall. This can now be done with the warp stabilizer. So let's go to animation, warp stabilizer VFX and it starts analyzing in the background. This takes a while. So maybe we use this time just to discuss uh, this clip here. So this is a clip uh, f from an earlier tutorial of mine. You find it on marmoworld.com in the list of tutorials. Yeah, it's this one. And in this clip originally, uh, we took Andra here and turned her into a part of the graffiti. And then later she became like alive. Yeah, so she she popped out of the graffiti and became here a living person. So in this tutorial, we want to do something simpler, just inserting something here in the graffiti, but you could in principle also do such more complex tasks with this technique. Okay, the warp stabilizer is finished uh, analyzing. And what we have now in the default settings is just a nicely stabilized version of the clip. Yeah. So if we do a RAM preview, you can see we have here a really smooth, nicely stabilized uh, camera. And if I disable the warp stabilizer, you can see the original, which is much more shaky. But anyway, here this is not about stabilizing. We want to use the warp stabilizer for something else, namely to create such stabilized precomps. And for this, we go to the advanced settings of the stabilizer and say instead of objective stabilize, we want a reverse stabilization. This takes again a while to uh, analyze. And now you have something where the background is stabilized as much as possible. Yeah? So you can see that here this wall in the background is not moving anymore very much. Yeah? If I scrub through, okay, here in, in, in this area some deformations are, but in principle it is stabilized. And what you now are going to do is we are going to uh, go to layer precompose, control shift C, uh, and say in the precompose, move all attributes to the new composition and call this stabilized precomp. Now we have here our precomp and we double click to open it and reveal the warp stabilizer effect and go to edit copy. Go back to our main composition and say edit paste. Now we have a second copy of the stabilizer here and in this second stabilizer we set the objective from reverse stabilization to or from reversible stabilization to reverse stabilization and this basically undoes the changes that happen in the precomp and we get again a clip that moves as the original and has now these strange borders here and if we go back and take our original footage so this was this one here and drag it behind, you can see that it perfectly fits. Yeah, in, no matter where we go here, uh, it perfectly fits. And what is the idea of this? Well, here now we have in our main composition essentially our original footage. And in the precomp, we have a stabilized perspective on it where the background is not moving much anymore. And now let's say we want to insert something. We want to insert here some image. Let's drag it in and put it here on the wall 
Yeah. And now let's go here in the main composition. Now you can see that the image moves with the background and looks nicely integrated. And essentially that means that you have two perspectives. So here in this composition as a pre-comp you can work and your wall is not moving so it's very convenient to work here. You can insert uh, here some stuff, do whatever you want and everything is automatically transferred back here to your main composition and here again it moves uh, according to the original movement of the camera. Yeah? So very convenient. And now the question is of course how does this compare to the original technique that I've shown here in the Graffiti Becomes Alive tutorial. So let's quickly recap what we did in the Graffiti tutorial. So for this I take again the footage and drag it in a new composition. And in the tutorial we used Mocha Import instead of the Warp Stabilizer. And for this let me first mark the tracking region. So one thing that is different is that if you use Mocha you can or also have to specify um, the region that you want to track. Yeah? So let me just roughly mark here the area and I'm intentionally just choosing parts of the wall and not the persons uh, behind it. Yeah? And say this is the wall that we want to modify and we go in, s select our layer and click on track in Mocha. And now we say yeah we want to create a new project and now we have this open in Mocha. And in Mocha all we need to do is uh, to ensure that tracking all of these options is enabled and we set our surface rectangle to fit to this wall. Maybe set it like this and click on track forwards. And now the clip finished tracking and you can see that here this blue surface per rectangle perfectly follows the motion of the wall. And so now we are going to export this tracking data as corner pin only. Save this. Let me just overwrite this file here. Yes. And we can go back to After Effects, load it in Mocha Import Plus. OK. We just say here OK when importing the tracking data. And now we can get rid here of our mask and say stabilized precomp to create such a precomp apply with Mocha Import Plus. And now you can see that. Also in Mocha Import Plus we have such a region that is moving here and uh, again it perfectly fits to the background. So if we drag this here in you can see that the background perfectly fits in. And if we double click to enter the precomp, inside the precomp you have a perfectly stabilized background. So if we compare this precomp created with Mocha and Mocha Import Plus to the stabilized precomp of the warp stabilizer. You can see that the warp stabilizer has certain issues here in this region. In particular, you can see that the wall is not perfectly steady. And this is because I have here this moving foreground element. And this does not necessarily mean that the warp stabilizer is worse than uh, the Mocha Mocha import alternative. It just means in Mocha we had the possibility to explicitly tell Mocha we want to track this region here. Yeah? So this mask said we want to track this and we don't want to track this foreground element and, and this one here. And therefore our track got much more accurate. Yeah? So you can see if we want to place, let's say we want to place this girl here in this area. Yeah? You can see um, that we have here this, this deformation of the background, which means if we go into our main composition, uh, then you can see here the girl starts deforming, whereas the background itself is not deforming. Uh, here certain regions of the background are showing through, and this is not 100% uh, exact. And compared to that, we can in the Mocha stabilized precomp put here something, go back to the main plate, and this one sticks very nicely in this region. Yeah? And another thing that you can see here is that here you have uh, in the warp stabilizer this problem of these 
borders. Yeah, it's like the warp stabilizer cuts away here these outer parts uh, of the image. Of course, you can avoid this by zooming in. Yeah, but with uh, the mocha variant here, you don't have this issue at all because the region that you want to modify, you can set in mocha itself with this blue surface rectangle here. And if you extend it beyond the borders of your image, um, then uh, you don't have the problem of borders that are cut away. Okay, but in general, this means Warp Stabilizer has the advantage you don't need to go to a separate program, it's a bit quicker, but the disadvantage you might have these border problems and also it's a bit more difficult to get accurate tracks if you have these foreground elements. Yeah, you cannot specify easily the regions that you track. But on the other hand, maybe this is not the best example to showcase the Warp Stabilizer, yeah? Because, I mean, Mocha is really for tracking planes and the Warp Stabilizer can do uh, much more. It can stabilize entire scenes. And therefore I've prepared here a second example, which is this cyborg arm. By the way, for this clip, you also find a tutorial on my website on marmoworld.com where I extended this wound here. And let's track this also with the Warp Stabilizer. So let's go to animation warp stabilizer VFX and um, in the tutorial life on Marmo World I also did this with a stabilized precomp with Mocha import and this uh, works quite nicely but in contrast to uh, this graffiti scene here where you really have a plain wall where a planar tracker is the best thing you can get here this arm is not really like um, like a wall, like a plane, yeah, because it's rounded and so on. And here the warp stabilizer might have certain advantages. Okay, now it finished tracking and let's see how it behaves if we set it from uh, stabilize to the reversible stabilization. So this is now what you get as a stabilized precomp. And you can see that out of the box uh, the arm itself and the wound is moving a bit. Yeah, so if we set here some, let me just put here some test text like this. And now let's create again a stabilized precomp. We select our layers, go to layer precompose, control shift C, and say this is cyborg arm precomp, and move all attributes into the new composition. Then we double click to open the composition and copy here the warp stabilizer effect. Edit copy, go to the main composition and paste it, edit paste and set from reversible stabilization to reverse stabilization. And now we are back to our original and you can see the text is moving with our arm. Yeah? It is not yet moving perfectly uh, and this is because, again, we are not just stabilizing the arm, but also the background around it, but we can avoid this. So let's go again here into our precomp to our warp stabilizer effect and let's try to improve our track. And we can do this by saying show track points and then make sure that auto delete points across time, this option here is enabled, because what we then can do is we can simply select here all regions that are outside of the region that we want to stabilize and click delete and now they are all removed and we can do the same here on the other side and now this means all these points are ignored when stabilizing and effectively we want to mainly focus on this region here when stabilizing and this will make the stabilizer better. One problem is that over time here new track points show up yeah, so you have to go a few frames further and delete it and go here a few frames further and delete it. So this is really a point where Mocha has some advantages where you can just say, I have this region marked with a mask and uh, with a mask and I want to just track this one. And here you have to go through and delete these points. And now that we have deleted most of these points around that sh are disturbing, I can again deselect show track points and reverse stabilization is enabled again and now you can see that the wound is much more stable. Yeah, So you can see, oops, I didn't want to move this, I actually wanted to move the test text here. 
you can see that it now sticks much better to the wound. Yeah? Now we have to copy it again, Control C, and paste it here because we changed the tracking data. Yeah? So let me delete the original effect and paste it again and set it again to reverse stabilization. And now you can see that the text now very nicely moves with our wound. Yeah? And in such situations where you really don't have a plane that you want to track, but you have here like a complex deforming shape, I can imagine that the warp stabilizer gives you stabilized precomps that work at least as good as the ones from Mocha, because it can do more than stabilizing uh, planes, yeah, but also more complex uh, shapes like this one. And yeah, if you want to compare it exactly to the Mocha variant, uh, take a lo look at the Cyborg ARM tutorial on my website, where I do this with Mocha import. Uh, it also works, but I guess for such scenarios where you have such uh, objects that you want to modify that are not truly planar, um, this uh, warp stabilizer VFX could be a great alternative. To give you an idea what you can do here, let me just start very quickly, create a new solid, um, make it invisible temporarily, just draw here some mask, enable it again, and now if we go here to our original comp, you can see that the uh, hole nicely moves with our wound, and now you can start adding more artistic stuff uh, to turning this here into the cyborg arm. And of course, again, if we take our clip and drag it behind, it perfectly extends our scene. Yeah? So, okay, but that's it for this tutorial. I hope this gave you a good idea of the stabilized precomp or this um, inverse uh, reverse stabilization function of the warp stabilizer. So now with this new version of After Effects, the warp stabilizer will be able to do much more than just stabilizing your footage and you can do such great visual effects with its help. Again, my name is Matthias and if you want to see some further tutorials from marmoworld.com related to this topic, you find them here and yeah, I hope you enjoy my tutorials and I see you the next time.